Hello, my name is Jes Olesen. I'm professor of neurology at the University of Copenhagen and uh, founder of the Danish Headache Center. I have also been chairing headache classification committees for the last 30 years. And now I want to give a series of tutorials about headache classification. Classification is very, very important for a number of reasons. Uh, the classification has been used in virtually all research that's been done within the last 30 years in the headache field. It has also been used in all the drug trials that have been used. And therefore, um, patients should really be diagnosed according to the international classification of headache diseases um, in order to be able to utilize all the available scientific evidence uh, from drug trials and from um, studies of the mechanisms and uh, so on. The, um, Classification has been produced in three different versions. The first one published in 1988 and the last one in 2018. And successive versions have been more and more uh, research-based and um, more and more precise. So the art of classification has progressed as it uh, is expected to continue under new chairmanship. The first thing to do in, in classification work uh, was to decide how many different major groups of headache should we uh, accept. And the uh, division was first between primary headaches and secondary headaches and then cranial neuralgias. Primary headaches it means that they are diseases by themselves in their own right. It doesn't mean that we don't know anything about their mechanisms because we know an awful lot today about the neurobiological mechanisms of headache. Uh, the secondary headaches are caused by another disease or trauma or, uh, or uh, drugs or something else. And the cranial neuralgias are of course, pains that are irradiating along uh, a, a cranial nerve, uh, most often the trigeminal nerve of one of its uh, branches. Uh, the um, primary headaches can then be subdivided and uh, the secondary too, and so on. And in total, we have 14 uh, chapters, 14 groups of headache disorders in the international headache classification. Within each group, we then order the headache uh, disorders in a hierarchy. And this is what uh, we show in this slide. And uh, in the hierarchy, uh, we give numbers uh, or digits uh, to the diagnosis so that if you diagnose, for example, at a very, at a very general level, you, you diagnose, you only use the first digit, for example, one is migraine, two is tension type headache, and so on. Uh, but then uh, when you move on to the major uh, divisions of, of this, uh, you get to the second uh, digit. And uh, here is an example of episodic syndromes that may be associated with uh, migraine. And uh, we start there with the two digits, 1.6. But then you can see we can go to three digits recurrent gastrointestinal disturbances, and we can even go to the fourth digit <coughs> under, under that, which is a cyclic vomiting syndrome. This is called the hierarchical classification system. And the virtue of this hierarchy is that the classification can be used at all different levels of the healthcare system. If you are in uh, general practice, or uh, even uh, if you're in, the, in uh, Africa, in the savanna, there will always be a possibility to classify. In the last uh, case, you're just uh, probably able to be diagnosed at the first digit level. The GPs will dare diagnose at least to the two digit level, a specialist maybe to three digit level, and uh, in science and uh, uh, and uh, headache centers maybe to the fourth uh, digit or even in some cases fifth uh, digit. 
this is a, a system that has stood the test of time, uh, and it has been proven that it can be used in all uh, healthcare situations. Um, and this, uh, we have then disproved uh, an idea that was up early, that there should be a more simple classification for clinical practice and a more complicated for research. That would have been a disaster because then research results would not be immediately transferable to clinical practice. As it is now, it can be transferred with, with no problem. So this is classification, how we order uh, uh, the different diagnoses in a hierarchy, how many we accept and what we call them and so on. But the other extremely important component of, of the whole uh, we call it health, uh, headache classification, is that we give um, diagnostic criteria for all headache entities. And here's an example of new daily persistent headache, just to show you how the diagnostic criteria are constructed. So in order to have this diagnosis, a patient, uh, a headache in a patient must fulfill all the letter headings A, B, C, and D, it has to be persistent headache, not uh, episodic headache. It has to be distinct and clearly remembered onset, which is quite sudden within 24 hours. And it has to be present for at least three months. And unless these are all um, um, fulfilled, you can't give the diagnosis. And um, Sometimes uh, what you see here are simple criteria where we call them monothetic criteria that must be persistent. Uh, otherwise, you can't use the diagnosis. But we also sometimes use polythetic criteria where we say that uh, it must fulfill two out of four characteristics, for example, in order to fulfill that letter heading. And that makes it possible to include clinical features that are present uh, not in every patient, but maybe only 50% of the patients, but put together a number of characteristics that are all present at 50% in 50% of cases, we can actually uh, design criteria that can uh, be fulfilled by uh, the great majority of patients. In the next uh, slide, uh, I show the material that we have for each of the different headache disorders in the classification. In this case, it's uh, just an example, nomula headache. Um, we uh, give the number, obviously. And then we use previously used terms. Uh, in many cases in our classification, we have uh, coined new terms for headache disorders, or out of several possible uh, terms that have been in use, we have selected one, and that one is then the official one that everybody should use. But the ones that we should not use are listed under previously used terms. Then we have description, which is a short verbal description. In the past, uh, it was called definition, but that's a very bad word because it really defines a disorder quite poorly. A disorder is defined with the uh, explicit diagnostic criteria that I just showed you, not by uh, the short descriptions. But they can be useful uh, in textbooks and so on. Here we have then the diagnostic criteria, A, B, C, and so on. There are notes ex that explain certain things that are written in the diagnostic criteria, and there are comments where we often comment on the literature uh, regarding that uh, particular disease. So a wealth of information, and I venture to say that if you're gonna read one book about headache, uh, read, the, read the headache classification, because it contains a lot of valuable information, and uh, it's uh, authoritative because it's been accepted by a, a committee of experts. A number of uh, um, rules about how to use the classification. We normally diagnose patients for the headache they have at the present time. They could have had another headache 20 years ago. We don't 
necessarily diagnose that. Uh, but um, for certain purposes like genetic research, it's the lifetime prevalence. So for that, we diagnose all the headaches that a patient has had during her lifetime. And then the problem is, what do we do with the patient who is treated? For example, a patient comes in with a medication overuse headache. We treat it. The patient no more has medication overuse when we discharge the patient, but has, for example, a migraine without aura. Then we normally use both diagnoses, because if we don't use the medication overuse diagnosis, it's not entered into the systems of the hospital and we're not being reimbursed for that. Very, very importantly, patients can have more than one kind of headache. And, and actually, in the headache center, I would say that the majority of patients have more than one kind of headache. And then we must diagnose all of them. And that's, of course, almost routine when we take the history we first find out whether the patient has one or more kinds of headache. If they have more than one, we discuss with the patient each headache type separately to describe each of them uh, separately. It's a system also used by World Health Organization. Uh, they use multiple diagnoses to fully characterize a patient. So in a, in a tertiary headache referral center, patient uh, could, for example, have the diagnosis 1-1 migraine without aura, 1-2 migraine with aura, and 8-2 medication overuse headache. And as we treat patient and things move along, uh, the diagnostic uh, uh, situation can change and they can get uh, fewer diagnoses if we're successful in removing uh, some of the problems. Some patients have a headache that is very difficult to classify. It's sort of in between uh, different, and the, the classical situation is a headache that's in between episodic uh, tension type headache and migraine without aura, for example. And it can be because they don't remember too well and they are unable to express themselves very well about their headaches, and it can be a number of other reasons. So what do we do if we feel that the headache fits into two sets of diagnostic criteria. But in that case, we ask the patient for a lot of other information that's not included in the diagnostic criteria. Diagnostic criteria should be as simple as possible, and that means we don't include more than necessary in the diagnostic criteria. But there are other things that are quite typical for, for example, for migraine, and I can mention uh, uh, hypersensitivity to smell, osmophobia, which never happens in, in tension type headache. And, and that, uh, but it's not uh, part of the criteria because people who have it, they also have other symptoms that uh, makes it possible to make the diagnosis. So um, we can ask for that. We can ask for response to drugs. We can ask for the family history, a number of other things before we make uh, our final diagnosis. If a headache fulfills a definite diagnosis, but also fulfills a, a probable diagnosis, for example, probable migraine and definite episodic tension type headache, then the definite diagnosis always trumps the probable diagnosis. So in that case, the patient should have the diagnosis of episodic tension type headache, and not probable migraine. But we should also remember that, uh, that patients can uh, have more headaches and, and, and that uh, if, uh, if they have a sufficient number of typical headaches, uh, then they get that diagnosis, but they may have also some other episodes that fulfill another diagnosis. This is quite important. Then we have a patient who, who has, for example, a head trauma or who gets a brain tumor and they have headache. And is it a secondary headache or a primary headache? This patient may also previously have had tension type headache because 70% of the population have tension type headache. So we need to know, is this a new kind of headache? Is it a previous headache? Uh, and if it is a previous headache, has it changed its uh, characteristics uh, uh, significantly? 
Or is it just the usual headache that patient had previously? If it occurs in close temporal relation uh, to the secondary cause, for example, a patient has a stroke and they get a headache at the same time as the stroke, then we know it's a secondary headache, even if it has the characteristics of migraine. Because there are only a few ways in which headache can manifest itself, like migraine, like tension type headache, like cluster headache, but they're not, uh, there's not an enormous variety. So many secondary headaches actually uh, have the clinical characteristics of migraine or tension type headache, but they should not be coded as such. They should be coded as a secondary headache. And this is also true when a pr previous headache becomes chronic and when a previous headache becomes much worse, at least a doubling of the previous headache, then we use both diagnoses, the secondary headache diagnosis and the primary headache diagnosis. So these were just a few uh, things about how to use the classification. You can get much more information if you read the actual document, the International Classification of Headache Disorder, third edition, CHD 3. It has met with an overwhelming international success, translated into more than 20 different languages, and uh, there is one and only one international headache classification, no competing classification. There's no discussion about it. People have to use the ICHD-3. They have to use it in their daily practice. They have to use it in their research. And drug companies have already, for more than 30 years, used the classification for all their drug trials. Thank you very much.